So now I'm going to show you all the tools that you need in order to do this job properly. You need a cell phone and you need it with the, the timestamp application. The Yavi meter, in this case this is a ONX 630 meter. Test jumper, F81 barrel. You're going to need the amp card for documentation and a pen to fill out the information, obviously. What's really helpful is to have a screw gun like this, and in this case we have a half inch socket on it. You can use a standard uh, socket driver as well with an extension. You're going to need an extension to get in there with the half inch socket on it. Again, for speed, this is super helpful to have. This is a very important tool to have, but you can get away with doing that. In order to get inside pedestals, you need a key for the channel lock. You need this plunger type device as well for some of the, uh, the cat houses out there, you can see, as a plunger type. Okay. You're going to need a cable prep tool. This is what you use in order to um, put connectors on, on cable. Okay. And this is a compression fitting tool in order to install the connectors. And why is this important? Because this over time, this connector, because it's bending back and forth all the time, the wire, it's going to break and you're going to need to replace this. So a couple times a week you're going to re need to replace this cable uh, or the connectors. Other very simple tools. You have to have a precision screwdriver, a flathead precision screwdriver. Home Depot actually sells this entire kit. There's more screwdrivers actually than what I'm showing here. For, for like $25, it'll come with every screwdriver, flathead, and Phillips that you need in order to do this job. But essentially, you start off with precision screwdriver. You need one of these little stubby uh, flatheads because sometimes you can't get the lid open all the way, and this will come in very handy in order to, cha uh, to change the modules and the power packs. A simple flathead screwdriver and you know a longer screwdriver. Again, it'll depend on the situation. Depends on how well you can open up that lid or not. In underground situations, you can't open it up all the way, so these smaller, well, uh, these smaller screwdrivers will come in handy. And again, on the Phillips side, a stubby one, um, a regular screwdriver, Phillips flathead. Um, I like this five-in-one because really it replaces everything you see here. All right, so you need like one screwdriver. The only thing it doesn't replace is these stubby ones. Okay, you'll, you'll still need those in order to get into some situations. And a lot of times the power pack screws are a little rusted out. So you're gonna need a nice set of um, side cutters um, in order to grab the end of the screw and basically just force it out. Okay? And all it's really off to do is you know you're gonna have to change out pads and equalizers. So having these tackle boxes that you can buy at Home Depot work very well. It's very helpful to have extra shunts in case the one that is there is broken or, or whatever missing. You're going to have uh, extra connectors, F and E one barrels, a nice piece of cable because, again, like I mentioned, this cord will go bad on you. These connectors will go bad. It's important to replace it. And you can't do anything unless you have a 7 16th wrench. Okay? This is used on all these connectors. It is the standard tool that every cable technician needs to have. You'll need it to tighten the connector on your meter in case you're at a tap and the cable comes loose because you know for whatever reason you were yanking on it and now the customer is out of service with a quick connector 
you can pop it back in there and tighten it back up, okay, with the 7 16th wrench. The other thing that I've mentioned I, I think you should have, because you're going to be up on a pole, uh, you want to clip this to the strand, right? So that the meter is hanging. It's not. It's one less thing that you have in your hand. Um, you know, it'll be clipped out of your way, and you can do your job a lot simpler by having these basic tools. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to open up an LE. In front of us, we have an LE. In this case, it's one that you'll find typically in the field. You'll notice that it has four screws that you have to unscrew in order to open it up. What we prefer that you use is a drill with a half inch socket. Alternatively, you could also use a socket wrench with an extension and a half inch socket. I'll show you how to unscrew it. These screws are actually spring loaded. The reason we prefer to use a socket set because it's just much faster for production's sake. This is what you would want to use. your line extender and you'll notice that this is an old game maker scientific Atlanta with the associated power pack the first thing that you do is you're going to take your cell phone out and using the timestamp amp app, you're going to want to take a picture previously doing this you set this up with the appropriate amplifier information. In this case, it's FM0832 with the tag A24. So you want to take a picture, essentially, of a before. And then when we're done, we're going to take a picture of the after. This provides two very important pieces of information. Number one, you're going to take a picture of the current configuration, highlighting the forward pad the forward equalizer, the interstage information here, the reverse pad and the reverse uh, reverse pad into the amplifier and then the reverse pad out and then the equalizer. And also of note, these shunts. This is very important that you understand in this case how this amplifier is being powered. Red indicates that the power is coming in from the input and then there's another shunt here that indicates that the power will continue through the amplifier out into the output, feeding power to another amplifier for the downstream. But again, you want to briefly take a look at this and get a visual picture, but you've also taken a, a photo in case you, you forget in, ca uh, in case something happens here. So the first order of business is really to remove the power supply and the LD. So you essentially just pull the cord out, freeing it up, and then there's a little tab in here that you have to press down. You could do it with your finger and then just pull it out. Or what a lot of times people do is because after a while this does get a little bit of pain, a little painful for your finger. Is you take a flat-headed screwdriver and you push down on that tab and just pull it out, okay? And then you're going to take a simple screwdriver. There are screws, flathead screws holding down the power pack. There's four screws in total. You just want to loosen them. They are captive screws, they will not fall out, but you do have to loosen them. So. Take a couple of extra turns because you'll notice that if you don't, you may not have gotten it all the way out and when you try to pull the power pack out, it's going to still sit there. I'm going to show you another screwdriver, it's a little stubby one, 
And the reason I'm showing you this is, especially in underground situations, this lid doesn't open up all the way. So you're going to have really no room to move this because the amplifier lid will get in the way of you being able to insert and put yourself inside these screws here. So keep that in mind. We'll remove the last two screws here. Because it's a gain maker amplifier, it also has two screws holding it down. And these are flat headed screws. So again, your regular screwdriver will work. Or, like I mentioned before, use the stubby one in case you have no room for the longer one. There's a screw here and a screw there. There's two screws holding this amplifier inside the housing. I'm going to remove the clip and the amplifier will put out, pull out easily. Likewise, power pack. Let's put that aside. If you're going to bring your new amplifier over, you're going to plug it in. You're going to notice these are where the RF uh, connection right here will connect. So you essentially can snap that in right there. But what I recommend you do first is you take your half inch wrench and you want to just tighten this down just a little bit. Just like that. You want to make sure it's nice and tight. And you can see it moved a little bit. Over time, these move. So just torque it down ever so slightly. Don't overdo it because you could break. At that point, now you can insert your amplifier. So gently just guide it into place and then using two thumbs, holding your hands on the housing. Just force it in like that, okay? And now, in order to tighten this down, again, two screws, similar to the old design, but it's a Phillips head. And you want to tighten this down firmly. Two screws. Like this up. The power pack that's associated with this amplifier is an ATX power pack, 1.2 gig. It also has captive screws. These are Phillips head screws, similar to the old one. And it goes in the same location. Using your flathead screwdriver, just tighten it down. You want to ensure that there's no debris in here, first of all. A lot of times, little pieces of plastic, they fall off, or there's some dirt inside here, and it'll prevent the power pack from being securely installed. And you want to make sure that these screws are screwed down all the way so that the heat dissipates from the power pack. And I don't tighten them all the way, I get them started. Just ensure that uh, everything lines up properly. It's not tight yet. Okay, so the four screws are just nice and tight in there, but now we wrench it down, or torque it down, I should say, you know, just as much as you can without breaking the screw, obviously. Okay. But you want to do that kind of like in a star pattern so that it's seated properly. At that point, you take your connector, and you can see that it also has a little clip right here. You put it inside, and you want to make sure that you hear it snap in. You probably didn't hear that on the video, but it snaps in. These are the hold downs. What I'd like to do first is make sure that I connect these up properly. 
this little clip will eventually go right into here. But what I'd like to do is, using two thumbs, you open this up the best you can, and you secure the wire back inside this plastic retainer. And this is an important step because when you close this amplifier, you want to make sure that this cord does not get pinched in here. It could short it out and cause problems. So then you take the plastic clip, clip it in there, and now you're ready to set up this amplifier. So remember the two shunts that, that was in the old one? I like to keep the old units close by so that I can compare. And all you really have to do is take the old shunt out and you push it in. Make sure it's in all the way as far as it'll go. You take the black one in this case that's here and you place it over here as well. These look identical. All right, except this is the new module made by ATX. This is a game maker made by Scientific Atlanta. But they look pretty, pretty uh, alike in many situations. They work the same way, except this is amplifying out to 1.2 gig with a higher return band, uh, whereas this is the older style that only goes out to uh, 40 megahertz and 870 on four. But again, it's nice to have the old module close by. But as a backup, you have your picture that you took using your timestamp application as well. But remember, very important to make sure that these shunts are in a similar fashion as the old module. Okay? Because without this, you're not passing, in this case, you wouldn't be passing power out. So you'd go to your next station and you'd find that it's not working properly. Having then to backtrack and figure out, you know, what did I do wrong? So it's important to have it side by side. So now you're ready to align your amplifier. So in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to set up a line extender. The tools that you need for this is, of course, your Viavi meter. You're going to need an amp card, a simple pen, and a small flathead precision screw driver, flathead screwdriver. You're going to need a jumper with an F81 barrel at the end connected to your meter. Okay. So the first thing that I do is I always want to make sure that we check the input level. So if you're looking at the amplifier right here, you can see that the forward input is right here. And you basically insert your test jumper into there. And I'll take you back here. We're going to use the Viavi Quick Check Expert. I already have it set up here at the bottom. So I click on that. And you can see that I'm really looking for two uh, in, in this situation two channels. The high band, which is at 686 megahertz, and the low frequency at 261. And in each case, I'm noticing my values here. What I do there is I want to then go back to the M card. You want to start off by filling the information here. So in this particular case, this is amplifier tag A6. FM029 32. It is a line extender, so you, you write in LE. You type in your tech name, CDG. In this case, it's us. The test date will be 12 to 22 for today's date. And remember, I'm going to, even though it's misspelled, this is supposed to say input, not input, but it's input. So it's asking you to record the high and record the low. So we're going to record, in this case, the high is 12.1 and the low is 15.4. So 15.4 on the low 
and 12.1 on the high. Okay? So that we can go back to our amplifier and we're ready to set up the forward. So we take our test jumper and we're going to place it where it says forward out reverse injection minus 20. And you'll notice that it's in blue. Everything on this amplifier that's blue is forward. If it's red, it's reverse. So we're going to set up our forward. So we're going to insert takes a little bit of practice sometimes to align it in there. Okay, now we're aligned. We look at our meter and we can see that we have output level. So before we make any adjustments to the line extender, we need to make sure that this particular switch here, I'll move the wire out of the way, it's called S1, is set to position number one. So we take our precision screwdriver and we make sure that it's set to one. And as you can see, it's facing up and down. So in this case, it's set to one. What are we shooting for here? We want to make sure that we have an 8 dB of tilt. In this case, it's 5 dB. So the tilt refers to these two frequencies, these two channels, if you will. And they want a separation of 8 dB. So between the high and the low channel, there should be a difference of 8 dB. In this case, there's a difference of only 5 dB. So we go back to the amplifier. And again, remember like I said before, this is the pad. This will attenuate or lower the signal depending on what the value is. In this case, it's a 5 dB attenuation. The equalizer, it's upside down, if you haven't noticed yet. It's a 9.0 at at this point. So we're going to have to put in something a little bit different in order to get uh, an additional, it's at 5 dB right now, we need an additional 3 dB of tilt. So we're going to look here and just based on experience, I'm going to pop this out. I believe we're going to need a 16.5. Let's see what happens. And again, these get installed upside down, not right side up, okay, but upside down. And you want to basically just kind of like, just put it into position there and you'll see these have four pins and two plastic sort of guides. And you, can, you can't really get this wrong. So, you know, you don't want to force it, but you do want to put it in upside down. Just kind of put it into place and then you press it in once you feel uh, comfortable, all right? Don't try to force it. It should go in relatively easy, but it does require a little bit of pressure. Okay, so let's let's take a look. Okay, we're not quite there yet. Even though we put in a 16 and a half, we're still at 7.3. So we're gonna need something a little bit higher. So let's take a look. Let's put in the next value up, which will be an 18. So we go over to our equalizer box. Let's install an 18. Okay. And then we come over here. And you'll notice, well, still not quite there. All right. So what's the next value up? It's going to be a 19 and a half. So we're going to pull that out. On this side, come back to our box. 19 and a half. Again, insert it upside down. Just kind of like put it in place, push it in. And we're right there. So the next point is we want to establish our output level. So we've already come over here and adjusted our tilt. That's right where we need it to be, anywhere between 8 to 8.5. But you'll notice that the level is not quite where it needs to be. We require a 34 at 261 megahertz and about a 41 and a half to 42 at 8 or at 6 uh, 86 megahertz. So the high end again requires 41 to 42. On the low end, we want to make sure it's at 34. So how do we establish that? So we can see that we have a 30.3 here. We need to bring it up to 4 dB. We need to bring it up 4 dB in order to get it to 34. And the way you do that is you look at your forward input pad 
in this case we have a 5. So it's attenuating the signal by 5. So in order to gain 4 more dB, we need to lower, again, we need to lower this pad value by 4 dB. Okay? So there's a 5 in here. Now we want to pull that out, set it aside, go over to our pad box, pull out a 1 dB, and insert it. Again, insert it nice and tight. Here. Then we go over and we could see, oh, we're right there. Okay. So we're right where we need to be, 34 on the low end, 42. The next step that we take is we go over to this position or S1 switch and we want to now set it to position number three. Okay, so we turned it so that it's facing number three. We go over and we could see that it's it's up a little bit higher, okay? And by changing it to three, you know, what does that really mean? Well, it activates the AGC circuitry. So AGC stands for automatic game control. And it, its job is basically as the, the weather changes, the temperature changes up and down, it's it it keeps the same output. Alright? So when the weather gets colder or it gets hotter. The job of the AGC is to maintain that 3442 out. Okay? So now that we've set it to 3, it's now in the AGC is now working. So you can see that it's a little bit high, 34.6. So we want to come over here and we're going to take our precision screwdriver and insert it. And there's a little potentiometer in there. You're going to have to find it, okay? The screwdriver doesn't always like fit in all the way. You just kind of like have to search for it, make sure that you're on it. You come over to your meter and you adjust it ever so slightly. You turn the uh, precision screwdriver on that potentiometer so that it's set for 34 dB on the low end. And you can see that the high end falls right into place as well. So it can it could be plus or minus to you know 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 dB. That's it, right? So that's where you want it to be. Okay. And that's how you set up the forward. So then you have to go back to documentation. Okay. Now that you set everything up, you want to document everything that you just did here. So we go back to our card and we're going to document. It says main input, but actually this is wrong. It's output, okay? Because we're working on the output. So we're going to record the high, and in this case the high is 42.1, and the low is at a perfect 34.0. Then it requires a couple of things here. You want to look at your input pad and EQ. Look at the module, that's your input pad and that's your EQ. So we have a one pad and a 19 and a half EQ. We're gonna come over here. Our input pad is a one, 19.5. Interstage, we haven't talked much about that. It usually comes pre-signed from the factory. So there's a trim jumper, you don't really have to worry about that, but there is a 0 dB interstage pad in this case and a 4.5 equalizer. So we're going to document that as well. So the pad is a 0 and the EQ is a 4.5. Because this is an in and out amp, the line extender, we really don't have to worry about the auxiliaries, so we basically just cross that off. Cross that off. So now that we've set up our forward levels, now we need to focus on the return. Okay, So we basically will leave our test jumper in the same spot here because this is where we also inject return Okay, from the meter. We go over to our meter and we want to hit the home button. And I've already set up the icons here. Uh, so in this case, in order to test the return, we're going to use the DOCSIS expert. So we touch that. We'll let the meter initialize. And it's going to go through, basically, it's, uh, it's going to establish communication with the CMTS back in the head end. And 
we're looking for the a transmit level and it's going to show up like right over here in a few seconds we need it to be 37 dB to 38 dB in this case it's at a 34.5 so again doing some mental math we need to add about 3 dB of signal 2.5 dB, 3 dB of signal in order to get between that 37 and 38 dB so we go over to our amplifier and again remember I said earlier reverse is always in red so when you look at the amplifier as a whole you're looking at this bottom section right here and we're going to focus on the, these two components you don't really need to ch change the, the reverse equalizer at all but you in order to establish the proper level we need to change out the pad and again we look over at the meter and it's still running its tests it's doing all kinds of things here to make sure that it's bonded properly and all that other stuff but as a technician what we're looking at right now is at 34.5 and saying hey how do I get that through a 37 so again mental math 37 dB 38 dB that's where you want to be in between that range you need to be a, you need to increase the level by two and a half to three dB so we go over to this section right here and this is going to sound kind of strange because up here when we did the forward we basically lowered to get more level here we actually have to increase the pad value to get more level okay so it's inverse of what we did here for the forward I know that confuses everybody at first but that's how it works so we need to increase this by 3 dB so let's go over to our pads we're going to pull out an 8 we're going to start there so we pull out the 5 and we put an 8 in here and that what, what, what forces um, more level is basically because there's more of attenuation on the reverse side it forces the cable modems inside the house to talk louder so they raise their frequency or they raise their level up higher in order to um, establish the proper level back at the CMTS okay so we put in an additional 3 dB of attenuation we go over to our meter it still says 34.5 so what's going on here right so we have to hit stop and then we hit start again and we have to redo the test okay because it was it looked like it was actually finished right so a lot of times if you're fast you'll be able to swap this pretty quickly and kind of catch it between uh, as it's doing its test and you'll see that the uh, the transmit level will change but because we waited a little bit longer here it looked like it was done its test so we have to basically hit the, the, the stop and then the restart all right so then we go over here and then in a few seconds that should pop up and there we go we're at a 37.3 so that's exactly where you want to be. You want to be anywhere between 37 and 38 and that's where, where we're at. So at this point you're done. All right. So we go over to and document this. We want to reverse telemetry. In this case it's 37.3. Okay. Now it's requiring you to put in the values for the equalizer and the pad. We go over to the amplifier and again, because it's red, that's return. We have a two equalizer and an A pad. We're going to come over here and we're going to put in a 2.0 equalizer and an 8 dB worth of pad. All right. So this card is pretty much filled out. The last thing you want to do with your meter, you want to hit the home button. Come over here and click one check expert. Okay. This is call it the electronic documentation that's necessary to basically say that you've set up this amplifier correctly. So it's initializing. And you're gonna click a job ID. Okay. And the job ID, it's a new job. So you hit new job. We're going to remove all that. 
we're going to input the amp number. Okay? So in this case, it's going to be F M zero three two capital A and twenty five. Okay, so we have the amplifier in there. We're going to hit enter. All right, so the information is there, and then we're going to hit the start button. So this is going to take a minute or so. But what it's what it's doing is looking at all the forward downstream carriers, and it's looking at the reverse side here as well. So. When it's green, that means it's fine. Everything uh, is, is, is good from a forward carrier perspective. It looks at levels, it looks at adjacent carrier, um, MER, BER. It's, it's doing all these tests in order to ensure that everything is fine. You may occasionally see it go red. Why is that? And you'll notice like one channel in the red. It's really nothing that you can do about that that usually comes out of the head end that way or you know some impairment in the plant that's unrelated to the job that you did so don't be afraid of that um, if in doubt always talk to your supervisor about what might be going on but you'll occasionally see a red it doesn't mean that you did something wrong okay so just keep that in mind you'll see that here we're also looking at the, uh, the 37.3 in this case it's doing the downstream channels upstream channel now is, is the DOCSIS um, portion is being done again as you did before I'm going to wait it's green okay it's almost there And there you go. As soon as the save button comes up, you hit save. And you're going to go click the job. That's the amplifier that you just did. You want to click on that. You click on that. And then you come down and you hit save. And when it says save is successful, you're done. Okay? The last step, the very last step that you need to do here is you get your cell phone out and you're going to do a timestamp. Once again, just like you did before, where you did the, the before, now you're going to do an after. You're going to take that little card and you're going to place it here. I'm going to remove your jumper. Okay, get that out of the way. And you want to take a picture of the entire amplifier Okay, and that card, and you're done. And you're going to submit that picture as per your supervisor supervisor's uh, recommendations. Okay. What you have to do at this point is you fold this card. Oops, had a pad in here. We're going to tuck that next to the amp or the, the uh, amplifier power supply. And at that point, you can close the chassis.